Yeah, do you hear me now? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I have the honor to hold the kind of less least technical presentation on this conference, but uh, <coughs> uh, important uh, as well. Um, <coughs> I'm going to talk about how to teach kids code and how why we should do that. <coughs> uh, but first, I will start with uh, some words about myself because I'm not a programmer. I'm a teacher student, uh, actually, um, <coughs> working as a project manager for uh, Like Kids Are Coding, Teach Kids Code movement. And I was the co-founder on the Code Club in Trondheim, who has 300 kids attending Code Clubs at the evenings each week. So <coughs> we have so, uh, d done some work already. Um, I would like to show just a clip from uh, the news this week. And <coughs> it's done in Norwegian, and it means that if people get asked about their Facebook password on the street, they actually give it away. So <coughs> as, you <may> be <laughs> as you maybe can think by yourself, uh, we are worried. Uh, um, and we are worried about a lot of things. Um, for example, children's digital literacy, knowledge and skills, or maybe more the, the lack of these skills. <coughs> um, <coughs> schools, abilities and motivation to uh, be digital in this uh, modern society. Um, <coughs> digital knowledge in an applied science. Uh, recruitment to the ICT studies and industry, uh, participation, uh, participation and engagement in the digital de democracy. <coughs> so, the motivational goal for uh, for the Teach Kids Code movement is that everyone should be able to understand the computers and the digital <coughs> around us, and it should be as normal and obvious to be creators of this technology and not. Uh, not just the users. <coughs> um, and John Norton has some good points, and I, I just say a couple of words. Uh, and in, it's highlighted that every children should have the opportunity. And <coughs> uh, because we live in a world with uh, where rich competitions is ambi ambitious, so it's all about giving them a start and introduction to what this is. Um, if you, we look at uh, the Norway, the ICT sector, the 5% of the gross domestic product is uh, represented in the ICT sector in Europe. <coughs> the production growth is 40% in the ICT. And <coughs> in Norwegian, we have defined uh, digital skills as one of five uh, basic skills in school that was uh, <coughs> introduced in 2006 and the natural question is then is one of five voluntary because we sh uh, the kids shouldn't be <coughs> uh, th it shouldn't be up to the schools or teachers and so on to decide whether uh, the kids should learn uh, to code or not <coughs> or use digital uh, resources and <coughs> if you, we look at Estonia, they already in, introduced uh, programming in the curriculum in the primary school. <coughs> and <coughs> they were first out. The, uh, secondly, we have uh, Great Britain, <coughs> who changed the uh, curriculum. Um, and so on, it's more countries on, uh, on the move. Uh, Finland, China, India, France, Denmark, US, and so on. So something is happening. And, uh, but not in Norway. <coughs> and that's why Like It's According or Teach Kids Code movement started to kind of fill a vacuum of uh, knowledge. <coughs> and uh, people got together, got together, Te techies, teachers, parents, students, non-techies, and so on, just got together and talked about it and uh, decided to do something about it. So uh, the Teach Kids Code movement have a few kind of <coughs> important uh, rules. And <coughs> it's all about being constructive and including, uh, neutral to anything, um, 
it participate as individuals, so you can take kind of your experience from work, whether you work in Microsoft or so on, uh, but you are participating as yourself. <coughs> and uh, so, like it's according is kind of an arena for learning and using technology in a creative way. <coughs> and as you see, we are called us a movement. Um, <coughs> And that's part of, uh, a lot of us have kind of experiment that organize, organizations organize. And so we decided to be a move movement and be a bureaucracy. And <coughs> so we have no annual meetings, no uh, paperwork or so on. We just arrange code clubs. Uh, they say that if you want to learn a kid how to code, you have to learn a kid how to code. <coughs> uh, so what do we do? Uh, as I said before, we have code clubs, and that's kind of our mainly main activity. And you see a Scratch programming language called Scratch to the left, uh, which is the usual introduction language we uh, learn our uh, youngest kids, and the youngest are eight years old and so on. They only if they know some how to read, they, it's no problem. And so on. We have. Uh, Python, often the next step, we use Raspberry Pi, Coder, and so on. We have gathered all our projects <coughs> in a new page uh, uh, this spring. And uh, <coughs> this is going to be developed a lot more in the summer. Uh, and the projects look like this. Um, we give, uh, in the start, they, we, give, uh, we give them a lot of code and they just have to test it and see what's happened and so on because you need some background, background to be creative. So we give them projects, and uh, Scratch is kind of a drag and drop programming. You have finished, hello, you have uh, code blocks, so you just drag and put together and see what's happened. Um, <coughs> we also have kind of a conference for kids, uh, the Norwegian Developer Conference, every year in June in, here in Oslo. They give us uh, there are uh, rooms for free on the e one of the evenings. Um, the last year we had over 300 participants, kids, uh, <coughs> doing uh, sort of certain stuff. Uh, for example, dro uh, programming drones. <coughs> and just to give an uh, insight of what kind of people who are with us, you see the man behind with his kid in the arm. He is actually holding the course. And we have courses and conferences for teachers. We have uh, had three conferences in Oslo, one in Trondheim, and this autumn we're going to also have in Molde, Tromsø, and uh, Bergen. <coughs> and we also have uh, uh, courses where 15 and 16 years old kids teach 10 years old kids how to code in Scratch. And uh, for some of the kids, that's their, their first job, actually. And <coughs> that is happening in Oslo right now, and we hope that uh, this concept is going to be a lot greater uh, in a short, short time. We also use uh, the libraries uh <coughs> and uh, the resources and space. <coughs> uh, achievements, we have over 40,000 kids attending code clubs and so on, the last two years here in Norway. Uh, <coughs> the yearly concept, Our Code, which is projects, it takes about four to five minutes to do, and teachers can just use them in the classroom. We have almost 25,000 Norwegian uh, pupils attending in December. <coughs> we have over 2,000 volunteers, some uh, making a lot effort and some just a little, but over 2,000 people have uh, uh, participated. <coughs> Covering the whole Norway from uh, Kristiansand in the south to Tromsø in the north. We have companies that uh, <coughs> uh, for the, that arrange code clubs for the children and so on. You, we can use their locations. Also, in December, Microsoft said that every of our, uh, our um, employees get one day free from work if they use it on their school to teach kids how to code. Use the, uh, doing the co our code, just to arrange it. <coughs> and uh, yeah. <coughs> uh, 
um, and how do they contribute? <coughs> they start car clubs, promote it, uh, talk with the schools, help them, talk with the politicians, um, <coughs> translate task uh, projects. We have uh, uh <coughs> some of our projects is just translated from English from code.org and code club UK. <coughs> And make how to uh, to make it simple for others and especially teachers to just use it and uh, uh, and yeah developing uh, projects and uh, the our net web page and so on. Companies host code clubs, donate employees time, adapt the school, host code clubs and evenings um, <coughs> and cover costs. <coughs> um, schools they need help because. Uh, <coughs> we have code clubs all over the country, but uh, to get uh, that everyone, every child should get the opportunity, we need to get it into the schools. So <coughs> we help them with informational meetings, courses for teachers, uh, <coughs> and uh, after school activities, uh, how they can use it in the classroom, connecting it to the courses already existing in the Norwegian school, and so on. <coughs> So that's kind of our, <coughs> our message. Just keep keep calm and learn to code. So my last question is, what are you going to do about it? Thank you. <coughs> We've got time for questions. Um, not much, as much as a, of a question and just a comment. Um, <clears throat> you guys rock. <laughs> uh, that's about it. <laughs> no, it, it, it's incredibly impressive what you guys have been doing. Um, uh, do you know of any similar uh, um, efforts outside of Norway? Uh, in um, Europe, for example? We're quite similar to Code.org. Uh, that's American? Yeah. And uh, they have card clubs in the UK, but they're highly connected to the schools. So that kind of some of the work we do is similar, but we do a lot more. Um, that's because of it programming is included in the schools now. But Code.org in the US is quite similar, and uh, we share and translate their projects and web pages and so on. So. A lot of the students who participated in the Our Code actually used used Code.org, uh, the projects there, we ha which we just translated. So that's the main, yeah. Well, with no further questions, I just want to thank you and uh, the efforts of uh, making more people yeah. join our ranks. <laughs> so. So, how does the demographics look for the kids? What do you mean? The there was a lot of white boys <laughs> oh. <coughs> in the pictures. <coughs> yeah, uh, of course. Um, the older kids are mostly boys. And, but the younger they are, the more girls are at attending. And they... Yeah, they... Uh, so, I hope is that they're gonna uh, follow our courses and uh, make some make the difference uh, smaller afterwards. So, uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, I hope that they they join us for a, a long time. And yeah. so, just a follow up then, since you seem to be aware of the question: mm -hmm. At which age does the gender difference start making itself pronounced? Uh, 13, 14 years old. So we we try to recruit uh, them as early as possible. So most of them are between eight and ten years old the first time they attend the code club, and uh, then the difference between boys and girls are very small. And once they've started and are part of it, do they tend to drop out once they become early teenagers, or is it too early to tell? Um, in general, boys or girls, or. Uh, I was kind of referring to whether the girls would be dropping out earlier or more so than the boys. Yeah, uh, we don't know yet because we are just two years old and 
the, the most girls who attend are uh, young, very young. So we don't know yet if they would. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Okay. Once again, thank you for making the future more interesting yeah. and diverse. <laughs>